All right, folks, let's do this thing again. Or something. Hello, and welcome to the Freakish Lemon Talks About Stuff video series podcast thing. I suppose one of these days I'll have to come up with a name for it, but here we go, episode two of the stuff. So, welcome if you're a new viewer and you've stumbled upon this mess. And welcome back if you were a previous viewer or something. One of, I, I'm not very good at getting these things started. Hello, I am the Freakish Lemon. I go by Adrian and I use male pronouns for Whatever I'm about to talk about, you'll be able to see my show notes over at my blog at freakishlemon.com and you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, Ravelry, places, uh, under the username Freakish Lemon. Um, yeah, so, so that's the thing. Uh, I am a little bit of a different view from the last video I made because it is raining and cloudy outside, so the light is a little weird, um, but I think I've got it figured out to go with my camera and all the things. You're just gonna see different parts of the shelves and also some blank wall over there. It's a very rare piece of space for a blank wall. All the other walls are filled with things. It's the only one that's blank. Uh, sometimes things are there for holidays, but there's nothing permanent that goes there so far. Maybe one day, but uh, until then, this is the view you'll have to live with, I guess. Who cares what my wall looks like, right? You're here to see the things that I've been making. So let's get started with the first segment, which is stuff on sticks. I've finished a few things, huzzah. Um, first of which is Hazel the Humpback Whale. And I've written down a cue card for myself this time so I won't forget everything and won't have 50 million freaking jump cuts. So Hazel the Humpback Whale using the pattern Hazel the Humpback Whale by Beck Bertain. Uh, I knit her on US size 0 2.0 millimeter DPNs using Holiday Yarns grab bag yarns, um, you know, odds and ends from her dye lots, and uh, some Merry Little Lamb green, red, and gray here for the tail, um, which is a hand-spun, hand-dyed wool that I lost all the um, labels for, so I don't have any more details than that, other than it's from The Merry Little Lamb. And here she is in all of her glory, with her floppy tail fins and her floppy fins, and I'm really pleased with how she turned out. Uh, she lives on my printer, over off to the side. Um, just kind of perched there and being a whale. And I really enjoy her. Um, maybe one day I'll make another one in actual whale colors, but until then, this is what I have, and she's lovely. And I would definitely uh, recommend this pattern if you really want a whale. Um, if you're a beginner, maybe not so much, because there are very few repeated rows, but um, it was an interesting exercise in plush construction. I also finished that uh, Mulberry Lion Brand Woolies Chunky Hood Scarf using a pattern of my own design. I do not have it here because it has gone to its new home. It was a commission from a co-worker, but uh, I will put a picture up here if I can do the fancy things. And that was knit on um, US 8 5.0 millimeter needles um, and I will be writing out that pattern at, at some point so it will be up in my Ravelry patterns someday if you want to make one for yourself. I also finished that hat commission with the Mermaid Tails uh, yarn from The Ugly Room, the Superwash Merino and Nylon blend, and I did a Lion Brand white acrylic pom-pom to go on top of it. Again, I do not have that finished item here because it has gone on to its new home, but I will put up a picture. And 
and I used the Graham pattern by Jennifer Adams, which is, I believe, a free pattern on Ravelry. I started out with US 4 3.5 millimeter needles, and I upped it up to US 6 uh, 4.0 millimeter needles. Um, I do have a loose gauge, so I tend to be several, at least one or two needle sizes lower than what's recommended for the pattern. Uh, so make sure you check your gauge with the patterns before doing anything that I'm doing because I know my, my needle sizes are weird um, for the things that I'm making sometimes. I also finished another commission, uh, mostly. I just have to wash and block these. But these are fingerless mitts using a slightly altered version of the pattern Giving is Receiving by Uma Padu. Um, it's in the Lion Brand Woolies Chunky uh, in colorway mulberry to match the hood scarf because it's for the same person. And I did alter the pattern a little bit. Um, I cast on fewer stitches and I made the palms just straight ribbing instead of the sort of broken rib that she has in her pattern. Um, and also I think they're shorter than the pattern calls for, but this is um, what I had done with the brown ones uh, that I talked about. I think I talked about in the last episode. If I didn't, I'm sorry, but um, for another person who had a discontinued yarn for her hood scarf and gloves, so I had to make the yarn fit, and uh, the person who's getting these tried on the brown ones uh, one day at work and said she wanted the same thing. So I did the same alterations. Um, and they're they're very squishy because it's chunky yarn. <laughs> um, these will be very warm. Not that she's going to need it now because it's been warm for the past week. It's been 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which, I mean, we've had... It's been averaging out to about zero degrees Fahrenheit for all of February and the first couple weeks of March, so it feels really warm and all the snow's melting and it makes me very sad because I love winter, but everyone else is happy, so I guess that's all right. Um, and I knit these on US 5 3.75 millimeter DPNs. I think there were just bamboo ones that I picked up at Joann's. So I have two works in progress on sticks right now. I have my Christmas sock that I showed you last episode. I worked a little bit on it last night. Um, it's in the Red Heart, Heart and Soul with Aloe in the colorway Christmas. Uh, it's just a plain vanilla sock pattern. Um, it's the Soldier Sock by... I forgot who. Um, Jessica Day George. And these are US 1 2.25 millimeter aluminum DPNs. They're pretty uh, worn. I don't know if you can see in this light, but uh, you can see that the paint has actually started being rubbed off on the ends because I use these all the time for socks. Uh, but yeah, simple sock, and I'm really liking how this is actually turning out. I, I mean, you can't really tell from the skein what the uh, color pattern is going to be and it doesn't say that it's a striping anywhere I don't think mm -hmm. nope no it doesn't say it's a striping anywhere so I wasn't sure because here it looks like a variegated but it's turning out to be a little more stripey than uh, than I thought it would be. And I'm actually really liking it. It looks like a bunch of Christmassy scraps. Um, and so far there hasn't been an exact color repeat. I mean, there's there's a couple of greens that are very close. There's a, this red and this red are very close, but it's not in the same uh, order so far. I'll be interested to see how the color progression uh, continues when I get closer to finishing this sock. And you might see these socks for a few episodes because it's my I don't want to think while I'm doing anything socks. So not as often worked on as other projects. Uh, and I have one more other work in progress on sticks. 
And I cast this on because I wanted to do a bit of selfish knitting uh, after all these commissions I've been doing. It is the Age of Brass and Steam Kerchief by Orange Flower Yarn. Um, oh, hang on. I'm tangled. Yep, that's the front. Um, best way to show this. How is the best way to show this? So here we go. Here's the center. Uh, and this is in 100 Ravens yarn, which is a merino in the colorway Rohan at Stitches in 2013, Stitches East. She had a booth, and in her booth, in the center table, was Lord of the Rings inspired colorways. So I immediately bought two, and my mother immediately bought one. It was the first booth we stopped at, at Stitches East, and we were like, oh boy, this is, this is how it's gonna be. Because if we walked away and came back, they'd be gone. So here's Rohan, which is this kind of, um, kind of a muted red, a muted pinkish red and gray, um, which I really like. Um, and the stitch markers I'm using are ones I made out of a couple of plastic beads. I don't know if they're actually doing anything. These are beads I got in my fresh, no, sophomore year chemistry class. I don't even know what we were studying, but he passed out these little packets of beads and they look white after they've been in the dark, but when you put them in the sun, they turn colors. I don't know if the chemicals that do that in these beads still work because I keep these in a bag, but uh, maybe I'll leave this out and see if they'll change colors in the sun. But it's just a couple of jump rings in some plastic beads to mark where I need to do my increases. And I'm doing this on US 4 3.5 millimeter circulars. And here is the 100 Ravens tag. Oop. What are you doing? She doesn't want to come on camera. Whoo! You want to say hello to YouTube? Say hello. Look at the camera. Look. Look right there. Look! Too excited by the windows. This is Penny. She's a Pembroke Welsh Corgi who doesn't want to be up in my arms right now. She was born in October, so... She's about five months old. And she's being a little snot right now. Yes, she is. I thought she needed something, but apparently she just wanted to play. So that'll have to wait till after this video. So we'll move on to my next segment, Stefan Hooks. So I mentioned uh, last episode that I bought some Tunisian crochet hooks and I was looking forward to Tunisian crocheting. Well, I went a little bit crazy and I made a whole bunch of washcloths that are going to go into the bin for things to gift or things to sell at a future date. Whole bunch of them. I just basically spent a day doing that. Uh, and I used the size I, 5.5 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook, and a whole bunch of scrap cotton that I have. Uh, a lot of uh, Lily sugar and cream, and some Bernat hand Handicrafter Cotton Deluxe, and some Lion Brand Cotton Ease. Um, all scrap bits. I also went digging around in the craft stuff upstairs and I found these wooden eggs. So I did some crocheted lacy egg things. I used the crochet covered Easter eggs pattern by Flax and Twine and Anne B. Vale. W E I L, Vail, Wile, something. Uh, and I used a 1.5 millimeter hook, 
there wasn't a size, a US size on the hook, it's just 1.5 millimeters. And use some spare crochet thread I have. Now a couple of these eggs are naked, because I like how wooden eggs look. And I did one decoupaged egg with some paper from an independent bookstore that no longer exists. Uh, I think I bought one book from them, and it came in this pretty paper bag, and the dog is crying. Hang on, I gotta go see if she has to go out for real. Turns out she did have to go outside, so now I'm a little waterlogged for being out in the rain. But we can keep going. I talked about my finished stuff on hooks. I have done no new granny squares for the collection of granny squares, but I have started something new. I've started crocheting one of those round floor poof thingies. Uh, right now it looks just like a giant circle. I have started the up the side bits, um, but I have a whole bunch of this mystery black acrylic yarn and I figure I could use something for upstairs in the craft room when I'm digging through my yarn cubes. So floor poof. Uh, I'm not using a pattern, I'm just, I did a big circle and then I'm gonna go straight up and then I'm gonna do some more circle. Uh, I'm using a size J, five point oh millimeters. 6.0. Couldn't read my card from over there. 6.0 millimeter aluminum hook. And I will continue to work on this. And that, I believe, is it for crochet stuff. Okay, so next I have stuff on spindles and wheels. I've done a bit of spinning since my last episode, and I have a couple of finished things and a couple of things in progress. Uh, first thing I spin finished was this little mini skein. Uh, it is from the Greenwood Fiberworks Merino mini braids. Uh, this is the arcade braid which I'm going to put up in my shop and call Trapper Keeper because it reminds me of the Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper uh, colors. You know the the flying dolphins in the sky and the cat unicorns and things. That's what it looks like. This is uh, 64 yards with a 13 wraps per inch weight. So about a light sport weight. And it's very soft and super bright. <laughs> uh, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Uh, this was on my drop spindle. I'm drop spindling all the little mini braids. I also finished this mini braid from the same thing. This is the colorway cappuccino. Uh, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this yet. I did this one a chain ply, um, which I had limited success with in the past, but this actually turned out really nicely. Um, this ended up being about 51 yards. Uh, and it's got a 14 wraps per inch, so... Um, maybe a heavy fingering weight. I'm going by the Ravelry wraps per inch guide, so I think 15 is a fingering weight. 15 or 16 is a fingering weight according to that, so it's a little heavier than that, but it's a little lighter than a sport weight. And I really like how the color blends turned out, because it goes from this dark, almost gray, brown, out to the white and back. And then I just finished this on my wheel. This is spun from a braid from Frabjus Fibers in their trapeze colorway. It is hand-dyed blue-faced luster spun two-ply fractal spinning uh, on my Ashford Kiwi wheel. It's a little bit damp yet because I just finished it this week and it was um, drying overnight. So it's still got a little ways to go for the drying, but I do like how it turned out. 
I haven't done a reps per inch guide yet, but I think it averages out to about a worsted weight. And this one, when I spun it, I did a very relaxed spin for this. I wasn't trying to get it to a specific weight. I just kind of let the fiber do what it wanted to do. Um, so it's actually a little more uh, woolen than what I normally spin. So it's, it's pretty soft. Again, still a little damp, so it might be even softer when it fully dries. But uh, this will be up in my shop when it's dry and ready to go and I do a shop update. It's about, uh, what did I measure it out to be? It's about 210 yards um, for this. And then I did have one single that was longer than the others because that's how I roll. And I chain plied it. It, it's like 16 yards. It's nothing. It's going into my um, odds and ends to work with. Uh, I haven't washed it yet, so it might fluff out a little more. Um, but this is it on my interchangeable nitty knotty. And I think this was the first time I chain plied on my wheel. I'm not sure how I like how this turned out. But I'm going to, um, next time I start a new bunch of fiber, I'm going to chain ply it and get some practice in on that. And right now, the only work in progress I have on the wheel is this. Um, this is something. I didn't write it down. This is Superwash BFL from dragonswool.com. They must have had a booth somewhere where I bought from them. Maybe from the Coventry Farmer's Market? Maybe from Stitches. Um, but it's this beautiful, it goes blue to yellow to orange. You can't really see the orange on this bobbin. This is one third of the fiber. I'm going to do a three ply on it. I brought. It's in a plastic bag because I, I divided them all up, but um, here is one sixth. So I do two, I split the fiber into six uh, pieces, and two of them are going into each of the plies. So you get orange down to yellow, down to a greenish blue where it blends with the yellow to a blue, and there's some, you can see here, some kind of not really dyed pieces so you get a little bit of white in there too. It's really pretty and I'm excited to see uh, how three plies of it will will look uh, when I ply them together but I'm using some refined techniques. This thing over here is gonna fall again. Uh, spinning this more worsted with a short forward draw um, stop it. And it's more worsted, so I've actually squeezed some of the air out of the fiber, so it's going to be sleeker, which is how I think it got so thin. Because this looks, this is probably the finest I've ever been able to consistently spin any fiber. So I'm excited to see how that will turn out. And... Next I have Stuff With Thread, which I've actually been doing quite a bit of this past week. And I'll tell you why in the new stuff segment. But I did make some progress on my Christmas cross stitch from uh, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Uh, you can see I just have the A square and the S square left before the border. There's a little Mrs. Claus, which is new, some toys, which are new. I think I had the snowmen done in my last video, but if not, I have snowmen, so just an angel on a tree is going here and Santa Claus is going there on the S because there is no Santa yet in this Christmas cross stitch. And then it is the white border, which I think I'm going to outline in red. And then I will be done with this finally. Um, 
that's exciting. I'm going to push to finish the letters this week and have this thing finished by my next video. Uh, but I also started some new things that may eventually end up in the shop. I have to do a little bit more tweaking and experimentation, but I started uh, an attempt at simple project bags. Here is the first attempt uh, using a couple of fat quarters and a 14 inch zipper. This is a little big for my taste. I mean it might end up being a shawl project bag. Um, it's just got white inside and you can see where I got uh, sewing machine grease on it. But it was pretty simple to make and I wanted a simple project and there's my little freakish lemon tag but it's kind of floppy and it's kind of big and not really what I wanted out of it so I made another one um, where is the front so I made a Star Trek one out of my Star Trek fabric uh, and inside there is the Enterprise fabric. Um, hope you can see that. It's the Enterprise. And I do have a couple of sock skeins or skeins of yarn for socks in there because uh, I wanted to see how much room would be in this thing. Here's my little lemon. This one I did, I put some interfacing on the back of this fabric so that it's a little bit stiffer. It will stand up on its own, even without the yarn in here. Um, which is nice, because if you just want to like put it down next to your chair, it's not going to flop all over the place <laughs> while you're knitting. Um, so I really like how this one turned out. I might experiment with making it a little bit shorter, because um, there there's still a lot of air up here. I mean, some people will like that, but... Uh, it seems a little bit too tall for me, so just a little bit shorter. I don't know. I have some things that I want to try out first, and I haven't put it through the wash test yet, so I need to wash it. Um, and I've made no progress on my quilt. The quilt has sat there and done nothing. And here is my segment for new stuff, which it's gonna be a long segment today because I went a little crazy and I got a bunch of new stuff. First new thing I got was a new DPN needle case. Um, I was keeping my DPNs in my straight needle case, uh, which is much taller, but they kept falling out every time I opened it. So I got a new DPN needle case from Rosalind Evans on Etsy. Let me just open this up. So it's this blue, red, orange, gray chevron pattern on the front. And it's gray on the inside. There's a flap and I don't want to spill my needles everywhere so this is a little awkward right now. <laughs> There's a bunch of my DPNs. And they stay in here very comfortably and don't fall out when I open this normally and not on camera. I wouldn't be surprised if they fell out on camera right now. I also got two new drop spindles that came in. I think I mentioned them in the last episode. This is a raw elm drop spindle from Sunny Fairy on Etsy. Uh, it doesn't have a notch, which I found a little confusing when I started to spin with it, but I spun the Trapper Keeper on this and it actually ended up working very well. So I like this spindle. And this is a gear spindle from Snyder's Spindles on Etsy. Uh, they're of a similar weight. You can see this one's a little shorter than this one. Uh, this one's actually a little bit lighter than this one too. Um, but you can see I have no shortage of notches. Um, to spin from. I spun the cappuccino on this. Um, and it took a little bit getting used to. There's a couple of rough edges here along the hook and one of these gears um, the fiber kept getting stuck on. One of the little 
teeth is a little rougher than the other ones and it kept getting stuck on there. But I think with um, some continued use, uh, this will be a great drop spindle to work with. Um, and I really like how it looks because it's a gear and that's really cool. The weirdest thing I bought recently is this thing. It is a milliner head thing used for blocking out, you know, crowns of hats. Got it off of eBay for $38. I won a bid. I've never won a bid on eBay before. Um, so $38 for one of these isn't bad. Uh, a brand new one usually sells, at least for my, my research, was like $60 for a wooden head to put hats on. Um, so almost half price for a used one off of eBay is not bad. Does have a lot of pinholes in it. But um, I'm going to use this for blocking hats and photographing hats because my stupid little foam head that I photograph all my hats on is so much smaller than my head. So anything that I'm making for me or for a human with a head that is not child size looks like a giant hat on this foam head, even when I stuff a wig under there. It just looks giant. So this is more head sized. Um, here's a hat I made a while back. And while this hat is kind of long because this is out of some very some of my very first hand spun, so I wasn't quite sure how it was going to react when I knit it. Um, so it's longer than the head, but you can see it's a much better fit on the crown than my foam head, which I had like three inches of a gap when I put this hat on the foam head. I also stopped at Joann's on Thursday uh, for some new project bag making stuff. Um, nothing in my fabric stash was really calling to me to make project bags out of it yet, so I stopped and got some fat quarters because fat quarters were on sale. And a bunch of zippers. So I've got these fat quarters with monsters and then this will be the inside lining fabric, this orange and red fabric with a blue zipper, 12 inch zipper. Everybody's so loud in my house. I got this owl fabric with this kind of turquoise color to go in for the lining with just a white zipper. I couldn't find uh, an off-white zipper that I liked to go with it, but the, the white zipper will work fine. And I got this fast food fabric uh, with red to go in for the lining with a red zipper. And also I got a bunch more zippers. Uh, I got some six inch zippers um, for the little zipper pouches that I sell on Etsy. I have one more 12 inch zipper in case I do find anything in my stash that's blue that will make a good project bag, and I got one forage zipper. It was the only black forage zipper for those tiny zipper patches I do. Um, everyone in my house is laughing really loudly, and I'm sorry if you can hear it on camera, uh, but I did get a whole bunch of zippers because the most exciting new stuff that I got since the last episode is a brand new sewing machine. My old one was dying. My old one was a Singer Inspiration. I got it probably a decade ago. Um, and it's been through some rough times. It's been through college. It's been through high school. Um, a little bit of high school. Probably senior year of high school. Um, and no matter what I did, the tension would not adjust and about every 30 or 40 stitches, the needle would jerk to the left. Which, you know, if I could get some stitches going, they would inevitably be crooked because something in the machine was yanking the thread so that it yanked the needle to the left, and it just 
There was nothing I could do. My sister's machine had a similar problem in August, September or August, and she brought it to a machine shop and they told her that it was not worth fixing because they'd have to destroy the chassis in order to fix it. In which case you can't really use it because it's just naked machinery when you destroy the chassis. So since mine was having the same problem and we had the same model of sewing machine, I decided it was time to retire that machine. I will be putting it up on FreeCycle um, for parts or if anybody wants to try and fix it. So if you are local to northwestern Connecticut, uh, keep an eye out for it. I will put it up there if anybody wants it. Um, so I got a new sewing machine. It is a Singer sewing machine again because I like Singer sewing machines and it's a Singer Talent. So it's kind of the if you go on the spectrum of Singer sewing machines, it's not at the beginning where it's super cheapy cheap and basic, it's kind of in the middle. Um, and I played around with it a lot when I got it. I went through all the stitches and did different stitch lengths and made little swatches and I learned how to make a buttonhole since I'd never learned how to do that before on a machine. I learned how to make a buttonhole, I learned how to sew a button on using the machine. It was very exciting. Uh, which is why I started making project bags. So now I can replace the zipper pouches that have sold out in my shop and start new things and then eventually get back to my stupid quilt, which is sitting upstairs hanging out. Stuff for Etsy. I haven't really done anything specifically for Etsy other than some hand spinning and the project bags. The only thing I've really done is uh, made up some new hand spun labels. I will, when I finish the hand spun, setting it up for the shop, I print out a label with the name of it and all the information, um, and I stick it in here, and on the outside it's got my little lemon on it, um, using different kinds of paper and things. But that's really all I've done specifically. I am going to do more for the shop before the next episode. I want to do a um, an April shop update uh, with a bunch of new stuff. All the Christmas stuff is expired so I can just retire that for now but um, I want to get some some stuff back up in the shop for April because I am the end of my commission list is near. I finished those fingerless gloves I have one more hood scarf to do and I have a small key card holder which will take me an afternoon so I can stop doing that, which is giving me some little bit of income, and start doing the other thing that gives me a little bit of income. Uh, so I will be working on that stuff. I'll be doing some new stitch or some stitch markers, and I will be doing some a whole bunch of moleskin notebooks that I embroider, and I have some new designs that I want to get out there, like for the Black Widow and. Uh, probably Captain Marvel and hopefully Ms. Marvel, some, some lady superheroes to add to the mix because I don't really have any lady superheroes in my, in my shop yet, so I will be doing that hopefully soon, hopefully. And finally we've reached other stuff, stuff I am watching. Right now I am mostly caught up on all the, all the ongoing shows. Vikings started back up since the last episode, so I have a couple of episodes of that that I need to watch. I started marathoning on Netflix the show Peaky Blinders, starring Killian Murphy, which I'm really liking so far. I'm a couple episodes into season two, and I really enjoy it. Uh, I also went on a bit of a craftsy class um, tear for about a week and a half, I bought and watched Ply to Knit, Spin the Yarn You Really Want with Gillian Moreno. I bought Drafting from Worsted to Woolen with J.C. Boggs Faulkner, uh, which I haven't quite finished, but I watched a whole bunch of it all at once. And So Ready Machine Basics with Amy Allen to get ready for my brand new sewing machine. So loud over there, oh my god, okay. And then uh, stash busing, make the most of the yarns you have with Clara Parks. Parks? Parker? I can't read my handwriting. I'm gonna guess that's Parks. My camera made a noise. I was afraid to shut off. 
Um, so yes, all things relevant to my interest right now that I have been watching like a crazy person. Things that I, or stuff that I've been reading. Mostly just All the Wrong Questions, book three, Shouldn't You Be in School by Lemony Snicket. I talked about book two in the last episode. It's been this and, you know, craft blogs and fan fiction. But I'm almost finished with this. I only have a couple of chapters to go. There's my bookmark. Next, I think I'll start Night Watch by Terry Pratchett, which my sister bought for me for Christmas. Uh, he sadly passed away this week. Um, so I think I owe it to myself to read one of his books that I've always been meaning to read, but I never know which books that I've read and I haven't because I love Terry Pratchett books and I've read a lot of them. So I'll do Night Watch next. Stuff I am playing. Still playing Lego Lord of the Rings. Haven't gotten much further since the last episode because I've been trying to get the commissioning stuff done and while I can do many things together, like watching and knitting and reading and knitting, playing video games and knitting doesn't really work. So that's been kind of put on hold, but I'm gonna do some of that today, I think, because I love Lego games. And podcast recommendations. I've decided between last episode and this episode that I'm going to do one knitting related and one not. Um, since I have been watching a lot of knitting related podcasts recently. So, well, watching and listening, depending on what type of podcast they are. So, the knitting related podcast I'm going to suggest is one that I started a couple of weeks ago. Um, who everybody's really into right now. Uh, is the Junk Yarn podcast here on YouTube. So if you search for Junk Yarn, you'll get her podcast. And it's a great podcast. She's fantastic. Um, oh my god. They are so loud. I really hope you can't hear them because they are so loud. Uh, but yes, the Junk Yarn podcast is a great podcast and I'd highly recommend it. She's really funny and I love watching her talk about stuff. So my non-knitting podcast I'm going to recommend uh, has a really great episode out uh, right now. Um, they do... Every third episode is free. There is a, a pay tier to have more episodes, um, but it's generally once a month one is free, and uh, that's enough for me, but it's... I think $6.66 per quarter for the podcast is really not a lot of money and I might up it and as soon as you subscribe pay tier uh, you get all of the episodes that were under that pay tier but it is the HP Lovecraft Literary Podcast at hppodcraft.com uh, right now uh, March is for Dracula so they are reading Bram Stoker's Dracula and talking about Dracula, which is very exciting. Um, they do have all the H.P. Lovecraft uh, episodes for his stuff um, free, I believe. That's how they started the podcast, by going through all of H.P. Lovecraft's short stories and novels. I think he had one or two novels. Um, they went through all of those, then ran out of work. And so they started doing works that he had talked about in articles or works that were adjacent or people he had worked with. And now it's just kind of weird fiction stuff. It's, it's a lot of, you know, ghosts and weird things from other dimensions and Dracula. And it's really fun to hear their take on these weird fiction things. There's, a, there's some historical information that they get to look up and relating you know, different writers to each other and why this story might sound a little weird compared to the other stories, that kind of thing. It's a great uh, podcast to listen to if you love uh, weird fiction. Um, and I think everybody can use a little more weird fiction in their lives, right? Right? Or something. And that is pretty much it for this episode. 
I know I said in the last episode that that was probably going to be the longest. I didn't anticipate doing this many things between February and March. It is almost exactly one month since I made that video and I didn't I didn't expect to be doing so many things. Uh, so sorry if this episode is so long. I tried to streamline it a little bit um, so that I wouldn't stop and ramble quite so much. Um, hopefully I've done a good job of that because that will make editing this video a lot easier. So that's it for me right now. Uh, remember you can find all the show notes at my blog at freakishlemon.com and you can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, Ravelry, all the good places as Freakish Lemon. Feel free to, to drop a comment by that didn't work. Feel free to, to send me a direct message or send me a message or whatever and say hi because I like hearing from people who occasionally watch my stuff. So I think that's it. I think that's what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna guess that's the end of the episode. Guess. As if anybody's in charge of this but me. So yes, stop talking now. Goodbye.